General, first of all, I'd like to thank you for seeing me uh, on behalf of uh, Diplomatic Connections. And secondly, I'd like to start with the operation in Libya, given that it's the most recent, and it's one in which the French had a major role. Um, can we have some data on the French side of the operation, number of sorties, number of planes, for example, uh, what French bases were involved in? Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, yes, for, for France and for the Alliance, uh, it was maybe an unusual uh, division of, uh, of uh, work uh, among NATO members, uh, and France is uh, quite happy to uh, have played a substantial role. Uh, I think uh, the most important figure for you could be the 30% 30, 30 of sorties that we have made and maybe more uh, of strike sorties. And uh, more importantly is the fact that we have uh, taken 40% of what we call the dynamic targeting. So it means not going for a fixed target but moving targets that uh, are of course much more difficult to, uh, to address. One has the, it, and, and did, your, did your operations uh, uh, begin and end in France, or did you use bases elsewhere in the Mediterranean, such as Italy, for example, or Malta, for that matter? No, not Malta, actually. Well, uh, uh, as you uh, certainly recall, uh, French uh, was operating by her own the first day of the operation, on March 19th, and uh, because of, of that, yes, the majority of the assets, all of them, basically, uh, took off from uh, from France for their home bases, uh, mainly from Saint Dizier and from Nancy to uh, bases of the uh, air force at the uh, in the east of France. And after the mission, we have uh, immediately redeployed the assets uh, to Corsica first. So we have a, a kind of a carrier, if you will, fixed carrier mm -hmm. in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea that we have immediately used. Uh, before having an agreement with other nations such as uh, Italy uh, and Greece to redeploy for a second time to be uh, closer to the theater. And uh, in parallel also the, the, the carrier, the, the Charles de Gaulle, was moving uh, from Toulon uh, across the Mediterranean Sea to get also close to the Libyan coastline. So you actually used uh, bases in France and in Italy and in Greece? Correct. And, and even and when also we your floating base in the Chardonnay. Uh, absolutely, and even when we had our fighters uh, stationed in, in Italy and in Greece, we were still using France as uh, the, the basis of the of base of departure for the tankers, for the AWACS, and uh, other uh, assets of that kind. Now, the original uh, pronouncements uh, said that, in fact, the air uh, effort would be involved in protecting civilians. Um, this, however, seems to evolve during the actual operation uh, from March 19th onwards into uh, attacking, uh, in effect, um, the, the Libyan army uh, and uh, the Libyan mercenaries uh, that were uh, loyal to Gaddafi. Uh, was this a foreseen change, or did it come because of circumstances? You qualify the, or you consider the change was in the, uh, in the, in the mission. I, I personally don't. Uh, I think what has changed is the way we have done the mission. Initially, it was you remember that uh, I was alluding to uh, day one of the operation uh, on March 19th, and it was very much uh, uh, close to, to Benghazi when the mission was to stop a convoy of our right. vehicle uh, about to enter Benghazi and, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, and. Uh, that was, of course, uh, done in order to protect the civilian population uh, because we knew uh, from the middle of February, basi basically, that Gaddafi was using his uh, military forces against the population, uh, even uh, heavy uh, uh, means, I would say. Uh, what has changed over time is the, the type of target that we could uh, be tasked to, uh, to, to address to protect the, 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 the population. It became a more urban combat than initially, but the, the idea remained all along the, the, uh, the campaign to protect the civilian forces and then uh, to, uh, to, to address once again the, the military means that were used by the Qadhafi uh, uh, forces against that population. That, that, uh, that remained all along the battle the same. You've been here two months, I understand. About three months now. 
you were not yourself involved in this uh, Tripoli operation, were you? No, not personally, no. I see. Just, in, in just in case. Yeah, uh, the, uh, was there, this was, of course, essentially uh, uh, air support for, for on, on the part of the Alliance. Were there any French um, uh, personnel of any description on the ground in Libya? So y you know the, the answer to that question because that was made public very clearly by my authorities. So I, I have, uh, of course, uh, nothing to, to change to that. Uh, and you know that uh, at least one nation has uh, said that they had uh, some troops uh, on, on the ground. But uh, I would like to take this opportunity to comment on one specific a aspect of the campaign. We very often say that it was an air campaign. So not really. It was very much a joint campaign with a land force. The fact is just that the land force was not provided by us, but by the Libyans. I so see. that's, uh, of course, the, the difference if you compare that campaign with, uh, with others. But still, it was very much a joint campaign in the sense that we had different services, a land force. We had uh, maritime assets, and France provided, uh, yes. in this regard, uh, 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 blockade. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, something that is uh, with no equivalent uh, in the alliance. I don't mean that no other nation has the possibility to no. commit a carrier in the, in the alliance, mainly the United States. But the, the willingness to do it in this particular campaign was uh, purely French. Was the blockade, uh, I mean, I know the blockade was, uh, was there throughout uh, the campaign. Um, did, you actually, did, you, did they stop anything? I mean, was the, were there, in fact, um, vessels of any kind attempting to enter the, uh, the Libyan ports at that particular time? Well, yes, there was a, an attempt to, uh, to reinforce uh, or to uh, carry weapons, uh, etc. So that, that it was very important. There is a kind of deterrence first that, that you, you, you put uh, right. uh, on you know, uh, the, the shoulders of, uh, of some forces when you uh, deploy such a, uh, an environment along the coastline. So that I think that the most principal effect was uh, exactly this, the uh, deterrence effect. The fact that they were there meant that people did not uh, make such attempts. Right? Of course, for, for yeah. them that was just impossible. Right. Yeah. Now, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the American uh, uh, side of, of this uh, operation. Uh, Secretary Clinton said that uh, the U.S. was able to provide support with what she called unique assets. What does she mean by unique assets? Well, that, that's very correct. I mean, the, the uh, uh, although I don't have to comment on, on a, a, you know, a, a statement by, made by Secretary Clinton, but the, the, uh, the, the fact is uh, the U.S. has provided uh, a huge amount of, uh, of assets, for instance, uh, air tour refueling. Uh, they mm -hmm. were on a permanent basis, a lot of tankers uh, mm -hmm. uh, above the Mediterranean Sea, allowing a lot of uh, uh, jets to get fuel and, and then have uh, more time to, to, to fly over the territory, etc., etc. Uh, also, uh, ISR capabilities and uh, you know uh, the, the uh, uh, what was really different this time from the previous one is the fact that 90% of the sorties, the strike sorties, uh, were done by other nations than the U.S. and it was exactly the opposite in the Kosovo campaign, for instance. Uh, if you can compare the two, if you com compare the two, because or both air centric, I would say. Right, right. Uh, there is a big difference here, but uh, it doesn't mean that the US was not fully involved in that with cri sorry, critical assets, and I have mentioned a few. Is, uh, but, but is it possible, uh, not, not is it possible, um, it, but uh, is, it a, is it a practice for, say, a French uh, combat plane to be able to, uh, to refuel in the air by an American? Uh, Fuel, uh, flying uh, fuel tank. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, but this has to be something which you practiced. Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. We do on a permanent basis. That uh, what we call interoperability. That's a magic word. Ah, so right. it, it's it's uh, the training that we have. First of all, the, the equipment you get has to be compatible. Sure. So there is yes. a, you know, mm -hmm. for instance, when you establish a connection between a, a jet and a, and a tanker to get fuel, of course, the system are right. to be compatible. But Beyond the technical compatibility, you're right, you have to practice it, otherwise you cannot uh, do it for the first time uh, at war. And uh, th that's something we constantly do. 
had you in operation and in Nick's right. side. But had you, other than Kosovo, had you done this in operations before? Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, I mean, uh, in the Gulf War that was already Gulf done, in the, the Balkans, in Afghanistan, everywhere we have this uh, this compatibility right. of system, plus the willingness to cooperate together. I mean, this, this is something very. Uh, you do not approach this idea for the first time when the, the crisis pops up. You have to think about it much mm -hmm. earlier so that you can develop the, the systems right. that are once again compatible. Then you have to also uh, build a, a program of training uh, to make sure that the crews are uh, able to refuel on another uh, nation tanker and so on and so forth. And that's something that we have in mind clearly that uh, to have to cooperate and to be uh, all together. That's From right. the French military point of view, um, did you, I wasn't going to say did you learn anything, but obviously you, you assess um, afterwards, you, after an operation, you, you make your assessment of it. Um, from the French point of view, what worked and what didn't, and what would you as military have learned from it? Well, first of all, there is a, uh, a political lesson to learn, if you will, is the fact that we had well identified uh, the points of the potential points of instability in the world. So we have in our white book published in 2008 mm -hmm. considered that it was a, a, a bow an arc of crisis, as we say, uh, going from Mauritania to, to Pakistan, uh, in which were the, the, the majority of the critical points. And therefore, it's not just a description right. of the of the world that uh, is contained in that book. It also implies that we we put a special look at these. Uh, at some of, of the countries in this uh, in this particular area, and that means that we were uh, having already a lot of data about Libya just in case. Uh, and in addition to that, what we have done when we have seen the uh, uh, situation evolving in the wrong way, uh, the military you have to be prepared. You don't know uh, what the, the, your your political masters are, are going to decide, but you have to be ready. And uh, since the beginning of March, we have uh, uh, patiently collecting data mm -hmm. uh, so that we were you know, able to update the, the knowledge we had before right. uh, about Libya. And that gave us the, the confidence to be first in, because uh, once sure. again, uh, on day one, uh, we, we have made that uh, the critical decision to, to go uh, first. And you cannot do that if you do not have the... Uh, the, the very good knowledge and uh, the guarantee that you, you are going to be able to do it. So it indicates to you the, the level of confidence we have in our capability mm -hmm. to uh, assess in, a, in an autonomous way the uh, situation, especially in this part of, of the world. That's very uh, important in the lessons learned. That's uh, certainly uh, point one. Point two is uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that we're able to do it with assets that are now much more than combat proven. For instance, if you uh, take the, the Rafale, uh, mm -hmm. the, the aircraft, uh, mm -hmm. one of the aircrafts uh, with which we have operated uh, over Libya, it was already combat proven in Afghanistan, but in one single type of mission, right. uh, you know, in support of, of ground forces. Yes. Here, he demonstrated its capability to do everything at a time. So air defense, uh, uh, able to enforce the no-flying zone, so potentially able to engage other aircraft with air-to-air -air armament, but also air-to-ground uh, armament. By the way, he was equipped exactly in this way the first day, and this is the reason why right. he was able at the same time to enforce the no-flying zone and right. also to yeah, stop the progress, to the progress of, of, the, of the tanks uh, uh, towards the Benghazi, and he is also able to take pictures and, and do uh, recce missions, uh, reconnaissance missions, same time. So that's very much a multi-role, uh, fully capable aircraft that has uh, demonstrated uh, in an excellent manner in, uh, in Libya what he was uh, able to do. So uh, you, no, you lost no planes in the Libya no, operation? We, hopefully we did not. No. You, uh, and you, you feel that, uh, I mean, in a, in, a, in a typical French analytical way, you feel that you have achieved the 100% uh, 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 performance objective. I think the mission was quite complex, and uh, uh, we, we do not pretend, you know, to be uh, mm. uh, excellent in all uh, aspects. And we have a lot of things to, to do better in the future. We know, but we are pretty happy of, of what we have done along.
outside with uh, with the other nations. And what uh, would you have to do better? Well, you know, uh, you you always have to uh, to make progress. Uh, we have learned, for instance, um, in the in the, the procedures uh, aspect, the, the the targeting type of uh, of, of processing in, in NATO. That's something that we are now much more familiar with. Okay, mm -hmm. that's uh, maybe one area in which, uh, and also of course the fact that we have in our inventory uh, some shortfalls that we. It was not a big surprise because we knew before that uh, uh, we would be stronger with more assets in some areas, but Libya uh, was a, a new demonstration of, of that, for instance, air to air refueling, I have mentioned that. Uh, we have also made the decision uh, some time ago to uh, get out of uh, what we call SIAD, uh, suppression of enemy air defenses, uh, yeah. those are missiles that right. are guided by mm -hmm. radar waves. And therefore, they are very well uh, suited to destroy the radars. And so we have decided to, uh, we decided to, uh, uh, not to continue uh, the, 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 to replace the capability we had some time ago by a new one in this area. So now we are able to destroy radars, but not guided by waves. Okay, so we do that with other uh, systems, not specially designed for that. Uh, also, ISR, we, we have a, a, a very good capability to perform. Uh, uh, ISR missions, but with a very, very reduced number right. of assets. So sure. we would like to have much more. There was a story about uh, running out, of, in effect, in later running out of ammunition. Was this uh, true, or uh, and having to, uh, in effect, get it from uh, the United States? This was a United States story, of course. No, no, that that's a story that uh, applies to some allies, but not to us. Uh, on the contrary, we have provided other nations with ammunition, so that's that's certainly not applicable to us. So we're uh, having uh, enough ammunition uh, in our uh, storages, and the uh, uh, once again, on the contrary, we have provided the other nations with uh, what they were lacking. But you have nations in NATO, and they have spoken openly about that, mm -hmm. sure. making the, 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 the decision not to keep huge amount of uh, ammunitions, maybe for nothing. Mm -hmm. So they, they just have a, right. a, a few, and if they, they need to commit, they, they, they immediately much. buy. And because everything is compatible, right. then can they, they can easily get uh, what they don't have. Compatibility would be one of the reasons why you were able to slip into this operation, having only just uh, rejoined uh, the military side of NATO after several years, I would presume. Yeah, the the, uh, the fact that we have uh, rejoined the, the NATO command structure, uh, mm -hmm. major right. structure, uh, is certainly something very important. But before we were doing operations uh, in NATO with absolutely no no problem. I mean, for from strictly military point of view, right. and the capability to operate alongside with allies, uh, you know, that was not a major change. What is much more important is the fact that we are now perceived by all the other allies as a, a member of the club, a single club. So that you don't have a, a club A or club B. We, we are, I mean, we feel very much at home in NATO. We had already this feeling before. Maybe not all our allies had the same feeling. So now that's good that we all feel the same. So this is, a, I think, the major step forward we have done is the perception that there is no difference and friends is just a, a member uh, of the club. Right. Do you feel that NATO, um, I mean, let's put it this way, where do you stand on the debate about NATO, NATO's future um, in, in the, in the post-Cold War world? I mean, oh, uh, the, in, the, in the sense that, uh, you know, do you consider Afghanistan has been a true test of uh, of its broader mission, of its outside frontiers mission, or uh, uh, and therefore not a very good one in that sense. Um, or do you think that perhaps uh, it, this whole thing should be rethought on a, on a different level now? Well, when you consider that the Cold War ended uh, 20 years ago, uh, and uh, of course the, the NATO common structure was fully designed uh, to, to be able to face the Varsovia Pact, so that was a, a, a huge right. structure mm -hmm. with a, a very 
very challenging uh, aim. Uh, and all of a sudden, we have asked that structure to do something fully different. The, the first uh, uh, NATO mission ever started in 1993 over the Bosnia when we established the no-flying zone. That was right. the first uh, right. first time we have done something similar. And and the, the uh, what I would like to my recollection of, of all that story is the capacity of NATO to adapt uh, to to new situations and of of course unforeseen situation because it's totally impossible to predict uh, something like 9/11 and then uh, mm -hmm. what of course. Uh, followed uh, afterwards in, in Afghanistan. And uh, once again, nothing is, is, is perfect uh, on, on this world. And uh, we have, uh, we had, and we still have difficulties to adapt. And we have every day to, uh, to do things better. And we un engage uh, 28 nations uh, in the same uh, process to, to, to do uh, things better in the future altogether. But the alliance remains something really strong and, and uh, very, very important. So you, you can see the the, the glass uh, mm. half full of half empty. Mm. I would have the tendency to see really uh, more half full. Yeah. Would it be uh, useful to use it, for example, in Africa in uh, peacekeeping operations, which the United Nations feels that it doesn't want to take on? You know, the, the uh, that, that type of question was. Uh, It's always, you cannot compare one crisis with another one. Every time that's something unique uh, because, you know, you have other routes that an, another region in the world, uh, the, the, the challenges are different, logistic or operational or political, cultural, etc. And, and it's difficult to predict whether or not uh, uh, an organization, the alliance in particular, will be well adapted or not should it or, or not to, to uh, deal with one particular crisis. Let, let's see how things develop. And all this has very much also to do with the political willingness of, of nations to, uh, to commit themselves in one format or in another one. And uh, it's, it's difficult to predict. Once again, uh, it was difficult uh, in 1991 when everyone was happy um, mm -hmm. because uh, the Barso Pact uh, disappeared to, to think that two years later we would be uh, engaged uh, in, in Bosnia and, and all the, the rest. I mean, let's see how things develop. And uh, for sure, it is very important that we all have the, the, the confidence that uh, NATO is, uh, is able to, to provide the 28 nations with the appropriate tools to be effective. And that's, uh, that's the case. So that's, uh, that's very good. But you, but you have. Are you yourself optimistic that it will continue to, to do so? I mean, is it? Uh, Why not? Well, because uh, you know, one one sees the Americans, perhaps receding from, the European, uh, from their old European commitments, the language, the transatlantic language. It seems to me, uh, has undergone a significant change. Uh, it's still being spoken very strongly by, by some European nations, notably the Germans, and to a certain extent the British, but the British do it in their own way. I mean, it's, um, but on, in this country, um, the old transatlanticists are not being replaced by successors, in my opinion. I mean, I'm an old Atlanticist myself, and I've been around a long time, you know, and, and uh, I could I, I worked in Germany for years. Yeah. So yeah. I, I see what you mean, but uh, isn't it the result uh, of the fact that hopefully we don't have a, a major threat in front of us anymore? Uh, once again, the the, uh, the mindsets were uh, they 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 have they have grown because of the existence of the Warsaw Pact and, and all of this. Now it's more. Uh, it's not that we are forced to be together because of a common enemy. We decide to be together to, to, to deal with a, uh, one or another specific crisis. You mean Iran is not that big a threat? Uh, and, uh, well, I was not that big to Iran no, at all. Neither, <laughs> is not, no, neither is North Korea, and le even less so China. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, another, that's another story. That's I was, I was, I was I know what you mean. Yes, relating to, uh, to, uh, to, the, to the crisis uh, that we are engaged in. 
But is there the strength, I mean, is there the economic strength to be able to mount um, what one might call proper, uh, satisfactory, defensive, for that matter, organizations, uh, military organizations in, uh, in both Europe and the United States to cope with anything that might come up? I mean, things do come up. I mean, this whole piracy problem, for example, is a, I mean, there are, today it's not a matter of a large nation threatening another large nation, but it's a, uh, there's a lot of, of stuff to deal with. I mean, you, you, France itself is, has been active in Africa, it seems to me, in one place or another, since, uh, since, it, uh, since independence. Yeah, but, but once again, I, I see a, a lot of encouraging uh, signals. Uh, you, you speak about uh, Africa. I think uh, I, I think that's eighteen elections or something this year in the continent. Yes, yes. I think that that's a very significant evolution, uh, and uh, all that is the, the the result of the the willingness of nations to do a lot before. And uh, the more it goes, the less uh, we will have. I hope. To, uh, right. to to commit, but once again, I, I don't want to uh, avoid the the, the question. Uh, there is a factor that is influencing at the moment all the nations, and it's the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we all understand that uh, the, the budget are now under scrutiny, and uh, will have not difficulties, but it, it will be important to articulate. The, the debate on the necessity to have a defense in uh, countries in which they have really difficulties to, to keep uh, a substantial military budget. So it's more, I would say, uh, uh, encouragement uh, that, that we need than anything, uh, anything else. And I'm pretty confident that uh, we, we have certainly a, a difficult period of time uh, to go through and afterwards, step by step, we can recover, I'm sure. And once again, we are not in a very bad shape. Uh, if mm -hmm. you really add the, the capabilities of uh, all the 28 nations of, uh, of NATO, for instance, or the 27 nations of uh, the European Union, uh, we have a, a pretty substantial uh, set of forces. That's, that's not the, the, the big problem, I think. Once again, I am less pessimistic mm -hmm. than, than you apparently are. Well, I'm not pessimistic. I'm just asking the questions. But uh, I, I'm interested more than ever, more pessimistic. The uh, the uh, all right. Let's let's uh, move on to the relations with the United States. I mean, the the relations, French relations with the United States, have their ups and their downs. I mean, uh, obviously during um, the Iraq War there was a down, and uh, uh, and yet you know you were in Afghanistan. Um, you are in Afghanistan. Does, but does this, this is the political side, does this influence military to military relations? Uh, well, as I told you before, it's uh, our business to stand ready. So if you do not have any contact, for instance, for a substantial period of time, you will not be able to cooperate in a minute like that because of all of a sudden there is a, a decision to do it. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep relationship and it's uh, what was done all along the, the, the period that you have mentioned. And, uh, and now what is, uh, of course, uh, much easier is, is to move forward because we have excellent relations. Uh, the, um, probably better than ever. Uh, we cooperate very, very close and we can address any topic. And sometimes we have disagreements because uh, like sure. in your family, you, you cannot be, uh, Sure. full agreement on, on anything. So uh, sometimes we have discussions and we, uh, we realize that we approach an issue from different uh, angles and we, we do not exactly share the same view, but that's, that's okay and we can discuss that. And, uh, and that's even, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, an indication of very good health when you can discuss even points on which you do not agree. And that's where we stand. So. Uh, so what you're actually saying, if I understand this correctly, is that during the period of uh, um, diff difficulty, antagonism even, um, after, in the immediate, uh, well, uh, bef 
before and during the Iraq war. The military side continued to cooperate. Yeah, uh, not necessarily at the same level, not necessarily to the same uh, extent, at the same scale, or etc. But it was uh, clear within the political uh, world, it, it was obvious that sooner or later we would have to uh, once again get, the, get close. If you look at, uh, at, at the earth, I mean, we are a, a restricted club of democracies sharing the same value and, and having the, the, the habit to, uh, to defend them shoulder to shoulder and that we have uh, been doing for, you know, uh, 230 years at least uh, right. uh, because Yorktown was uh, exactly 230 years ago. Yes, yes. And uh, World War One, World War Two, and, and all the major commitment, we are always together and uh, it will remain the same in the future. We are so similar, even though right. flags have the same colors. Yes. Uh, the uh, Afghanistan is seems to be drawing to a close as far as the Americans are concerned. I presume you have the same withdrawal timetable as the Americans? Yeah, uh, our president has made very clear that we will, uh, France would uh, withdraw our forces uh, exactly in a similar way as the US are, are doing. So we, we, we will follow the US both in, in terms of, of uh, uh, dimension of, of withdrawal, if you, number of troops, and, and time. So we'll do that very much in parallel with the US. And how many troops do you have there now? We, we had, a, before the, the process started, we right. had 4,000 troops. And, there, and the process, of course, is, is, is now going on. It is going on. So we had already done the magnitude. And what do you think was the French contribution to the Afghanistan uh, uh, situation? Well, uh, I mean, as uh, all the nations, uh, we have, uh, of course, experienced something that was quite hard. Paid uh, as the others uh, the, the, the the price of, of the blood for that, and we have lost uh, a number of, of soldiers. That uh, of course I, I, I think about when we uh, address Afghanistan every time. Uh, but uh, having said that, we are we are also uh, happy with what we have done in the the area that uh, was put uh, under our control because you know that uh, there is yes. a quite regional. Yours was not, was it not? Well, we are RC East. We are in the the Capisa and yeah. in the Surabi regions, and the uh, in these uh, uh, districts and, and region, uh, we are pretty satisfied with the, the progress we we have made. But that's of course very very difficult. That's uh, an area that we are not familiar with before deploying. Yeah. Uh, the, the all that uh, uh, you know, a huge uh, portion of uh, of the continent was was not our well known place. Sure. That was definitely not our backyard. I think. Um, thank you very much. My pleasure.